Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, another super fun painting for my first time painters, a nice collection of birch trees. So grab your supplies, make sure you take your progress photos. And on the video today, I will be painting on watercolor paper with the edges taped. You can paint on watercolor paper, canvas or canvas panels, whatever you like. So we're going to start with a light blue and that is white with a little bit of blue. I'm using the large flat brush, demonstrating a few different brush strokes to try, try any of them, but we're basically gonna be filling in the middle section of our canvas, and this would be the blue sky that is kind of shining through some of our uh, tree trunks of the birch trees and some of the foliage of the birch trees. So if you have to make your shade of blue two or three times, like I'm gonna have to do in just a moment, Please don't stress about getting the exact same shade. Having some variety in your background is to your benefit. And also mixing your color a couple of times is great for your brain and it makes it easier to mix your colors in the future. So don't feel like you have to mix the full amount that you need um, at the beginning. It is good for you to mix that same color multiple times. That's how you learn. And if you need to, you can add a touch of water to your uh, paint, but you never want your brush dripping wet with water. And even with the watercolor paper, be a little sparing with the amount of water that you put on there. So you could see right there that I did just kind of touch the tips of the bristles to the water just to help with some of the mixing. And if you're using student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply it a little bit thicker than you may be comfortable with. That helps with your blending and that helps kind of cover and fill up the space. If you're on a canvas and you can see the texture of your canvas, apply your paint a little bit thicker and it'll make the uh, process easier and the spreading of the paint a little bit easier for you. So like I said, we're not gonna be filling in too much of the top or the bottom edges because that's where we're gonna have some of our yellow and our foliage next but basically filling in the middle section of the canvas. And if you're on a stretched canvas, carrying this color around the edge just makes it look nicer when you have it hanging on the wall. So a good spot to pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna move down to the middle flat brush and yellow paint or the big flat brush, whichever one that you like. I thought I moved down brushes, sorry about that. And as you can see um, how I was doing when I was picking up the paint, I'm holding the brush kind of perpendicular, grabbing that yellow paint, holding it perpendicular and almost kind of stabbing the canvas with my brush. And as I'm doing this, I'm actually um, making a mark, twirling the brush a little bit in my finger, making another mark, twirling it. So that way I'm not making the exact same mark over and over and over again. It is okay to overlap a little bit of the blue. You don't want to do a whole lot because you will notice that it starts to make green because that's what yellow and blue make is green. But we're going to do this on the tops and the bottom. And this is, again, just kind of good practice with this, what I call stabbing method. It's almost like a pointillism or a stippling effect. Um, it just kind of helps you take out your stress and frustrations from the day or the week. And it's just a different way to kind of apply paint to your canvas. And a lot of my first time painters really enjoy this method because it is gives you a lot of freedom, it is stress relieving, and it's kind of just a fun way to uh, get back to being an adult kindergartner. And many of my adults need to get back to that mindset of just going back to kindergarten for a few hours. All right, so again, filling in that top and that bottom does not have to look exactly like mine, but just kind of in the general shape. Pause the video, take your progress photo, and here I'm moving down to a smaller brush, adding a tiny amount of red to my yellow to make a yellow orange, and same application, just smaller brush. Kind of kind of stab that um, yellow orange in there, and it will pick up a little bit of the yellow paint that we put on first. I did not let this dry, and jumped right into it. If you do not want your orange to mix with your yellow base paint, let this dry and then start applying your orange. And again, same application, holding that brush perpendicular, touch the canvas, pick it back up, 
twirl the brush in your finger, make another mark, pick it back up, twirl it. So again, that way you're making these kind of slightly random and organic mark making. You can even start to think that each tap of the brush, each mark that you make is like a leaf on the ground right now, or at the top of the canvas, maybe it was a leaf on the tree. If that kind of gives you a nice visualization as you are painting. Same with the background. If you have to mix this light orange two or three times, and maybe it's a little lighter, a little bit darker each one time, that's okay. Embrace it. Having that variety in your painting is to your benefit for a more dynamic and complex painting. So again, we're not stressing out about trying to be perfect. We're here for the experience. It's a nice escape from the rest of your world and just having fun. Again, remember to breathe, laugh at yourself a little bit. A lot of times my first time painters hold your breath. You think that helps when it actually doesn't. So again, laugh at yourself a little bit and keep on painting. If you even want to go in with some different shades of reds and oranges in here, go right ahead and do that. We will repeat this process after we put the tree trunks in um, at the end of the video. Again, those of you on the stretched canvas, remember to carry these around the edges. Um, if you end up forgetting, which I do quite often on my canvas panels or canvas paintings, and I ended up just painting the edges black. But if you want, remember right now to start carrying this color around the edge. If not, just paint the edges a different color. And even while you're doing this, step away from your painting, look at it from a distance, go, do I want a little more orange here? Do I want this color here? Trust that, go back and apply it, and then keep on painting. So a good spot, pause the video. I did let this fully dry, and we're gonna move into light gray, the medium flat brush. And to make the light gray, we're gonna pull some white aside. A tiny amount of black is gonna go a long way to make a light to a medium gray. Um, and you'll even see as I get into making my tree trunks, I'm gonna have two or three different shades of the light to medium gray. So again, do not stress about getting the exact same shade. But when you mix with the white, start with a small amount of black to make your light gray. You can always add a little bit more. Um, and using that medium flat brush, I'm gonna be using that full width of that brush. And we're gonna make these kind of long marks. Some of them will go off the edge. Some of them are overlapping. Um, the foliage, the yellow-orange foliage, they are not perfectly straight. Trees do not grow perfectly straight. They grow towards the sun. They sway in the wind. So these do not have to be perfectly straight tree trunks. And as you observe what I'm doing on the video and mimic that on your canvas, you are strengthening your power of observation. And that is a core foundational art skill, strengthening the power of observation. And the more observant you become in art, the more observant you'll become in other areas of your life. So here you can see that I uh, made my light gray again, and it's a little bit darker than the first batch. That's a good thing. It just shows different depth. <coughs> For our final, um, our whiter birch trees, we're going to be using pure white, and that's going to be showing that they're more in the foreground. With these being a little bit of a light gray, that is pushing them back into the distance of the painting. And as you paint, you are a magician. You are creating the illusion of this 3D space on a flat 2D surface. So a lot of times to kind of make that illusion happen, we have to do some kind of illogical things to create that dimension. Again, if you have more or less tree trunks in your painting than I do in mine, totally okay. You can add as many or as few as you want. So this would be a good spot to pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna use black paint and we're basically gonna put the kind of distinguishing marks of the birch trees um, the marks on here and they're just little dash marks not full width of the tree trunk really just kind of a little here a little there this is a good place to trust your instincts um, they're not perfectly straight but they do give that distinguishing um, characteristic of the birch trees or even the aspen trees if that's what you're painting so we're going to be filling that up on all the trees here and then taking a progress photo 
and then moving on to the foreground trees and then the foreground um, foliage. Again, if you're finding that these are kind of shaky, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and even rest your forearm against the edge of the table to help get you a little bit steadier. And do notice that with each tree trunk, I actually go back and grab more black paint um, when I move on to the next one. So kind of every couple of brush strokes, grab more paint, go back to reapply because you're going to get into kind of a good groove after you get beyond your third tree of what it's going to look like. So remember to always go back and grab that paint so that way you're actually applying something to the canvas and don't waste that action. If you need to turn the canvas sideways or upside down because it makes it a little bit easier for you, feel free to rotate and adjust as needed. Most things in art are merely suggestions. Nothing is set in stone. And these are just simple step-by-step -step guidelines, but you have full permission to deviate, make this your own, and learn. Basically, just keep learning and keep finding your creative outlets so beneficial to the rest of your life, especially those of you that have some stresses that you have to deal with or a very, rather difficult job. All right, so almost done. Looking nice. We'll take a progress photo. We'll switch brushes and then we'll be moving into white paint. So moving back up to that medium flat brush, we're going to make these a little bit wider and these are going to go the full length of, or the full width of the canvas. So these are going off the edge of the canvas. These are really close forward in our vantage point. And again, they're gonna be wider than the uh, light to medium gray trees. We are overlapping some of these and we're overlapping the foliage on the top and the bottom. And I actually I take it back. There are a few that I did not go to the full uh, bottom uh, going off that one that second tree that I put in there. So again, feel free to just kind of adjust make it your own have some of them go all the way off the edge of the canvas some of them don't. I believe I have all of them going off the top of the canvas, because these would be rather close these would be taller trees to us. Because we would be standing next to it as we're painting it compared to the trees in the background. If you need to, you can do two or three layers of the white paint. If you happen to have transparent paint, let it dry and then reapply your white. So that way you're not seeing any of the trees or the underneath colors shining through. And as you apply it a little bit thicker and that second layer on there, if you hold that brush at kind of a 45 degree angle, um, it allows you to apply the paint a little bit thicker. And again, our trees do not always have to grow straight. Sometimes they have a little bit of a crook in them. Sometimes they grow in a different direction. Embrace that. And then just like the background trees, we're going to take that pointy brush, white paint or black paint, and start putting those distinguishing marks on our trees. And you've got good practice for the background ones. So jump right in and do the exact same thing with maybe a few extra um, marks on there because we would see more details on these trees because they are closer to us in this vantage point. And again, remember to grab paint every couple of brush strokes. Doing good. Look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. Assess it. Go back to paint and just keep enjoying the process. I am so proud of you for painting at home. This is a great activity to add to your life. All right, pause the video, take a progress photo. I did let this fully dry before we moved into our final step. And we're going to go back to the yellow and the shades of orange and reapply our foliage. And I am starting with the yellow first, that middle flat brush, that same type of application, that stippling to where we're holding that brush perpendicular to the canvas, tapping it and in between the brush strokes, kind of twirling it in our fingers. So that way we're making a few more random mark making rather than the exact same mark over and over. And here you can overlap any of the trees, um, the foreground trees, the white trees, the gray trees, anything that you want. And again, I recommend that you get out of your chair every now and then, look at the painting from a distance, go, oh, I want a little bit more here, or I want this here, and go back and adjust. 
So like I said, we're still on the yellow right now. I'm adding that to pretty much all the places. It's going to thicken it up a little bit because I am using student grade paint. So it is a bit on the transparent side. So the second layer is giving a little bit more thickness and fullness to um, the foliage here. And then even think about leaves that might be falling or a few little random branches that might be in the middle of the tree trunk and add some of those leaves there. You're welcome to pause this video at any time that you need um, to take a closer look or just to keep going at your own pace. And a recommendation a student made a um, few paintings back was that they said they actually would pause my video, take a screenshot of it, and then zoom in so that way they could see some details that might have been a little bit harder to see earlier. So again, feel free to utilize any of those tips to make your painting process more fun and enjoyable for you. All right, so it's already looking a little bit more full. We're going to be moving into the orange and maybe a little bit more red and completely your call um, how much of each of those colors or shades that you want to add to your painting. All right, I'm really proud of you guys. Great job. Start moving into the orange. Make it your own. Um, and since the yellow is still wet, it's going to diffuse a little bit. So feel free to change and adjust your colors. If you want to throw some brown leaves in there with raw sienna or do more pop colors, feel free to do that. I am so proud of you guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint with me. And don't wait too long to do your next one. Until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can. And any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers. Yeah.